Hello, Chemistry 1A students. This is Mrs. Crumschreiter. I am your chemistry teacher. Right now, you have a substitute teacher because I am off to a surgery. So I wanted to go over the syllabus with you so that you would know um, what my expectations are for you in this class. So um, again, this is Chemistry 1A. My name is Mrs. Crumschreiter, or you're welcome to call me Mrs. K. Um, my email address here, that's pretty important because if you need to communicate with me in some way, shape, or form, that will be the very best way for you to do that. You are in room 415, and when I am back at school, my conference period will be first period. So, um, again, this is an introductory chemistry class, so my goal is to teach you and get you a strong foundation in chemistry. Um, I'm treating this like a college prep class, so I'm assuming you are in this class because your intention is to go to college. So I do expect you to be self-motivated and interested in learning, okay? And from time to time, we will um, talk about college and ask you some questions about your plans for college. So requirements that you need to bring to class. Um, you'll be getting a textbook here in the next day or two. So that is yours. Um, last trimester, most students chose to not carry their textbook back and forth um, in their backpacks because their backpacks were really, really full and heavy. So it's fine. Oftentimes, you won't need your textbook in class, so you really can leave your textbook at home if you would prefer. Um, you will need a calculator for a couple things here in um, Chemistry 1A. Um, I would, you don't need a fancy graphing calculator. Um, a TI-30X would be perfect. Um, and in Google Classroom, there's a preferred calculator and it shows you a picture of what that calculator looks like. Um, you absolutely do need a calculator for Chem 1B. There's a lot more math in Chemistry B. Um, paper depends. Um, if you like to type things, you can type things um, using your Chromebook. But for some things, it may actually be easier for you to hand write it out. So you may want to have a piece of paper or a notebook or a paper. Um, the through ring binder, um, we'll talk about that. Normally for my class, I do require you to have a binder for chemistry class and chemistry class alone. However, again, given the in circumstances that we're not using lockers and your backpacks are awfully full, um, you'll see when we get down to this in the uh, syllabus that it's kind of waived right now. You do, however, um, I do expect you to bring your Chromebook with you to class every day. Most days you won't use it um, when I'm not there um, right now with the substitute teacher. She's going to show the videos to you in class, um, but I still would like you to have your Chromebook. If there is a quiz or a test, you'll use your Chromebook to do that. So attendance and makeup work. Again, um, I'm going to hold you responsible for everything that we cover in class. It's much easier for you to keep up if you keep absences to a minimum. Um, in the event that you're not there, you do need to watch the videos. Um, again, if ever you want to rewatch the videos, you certainly could do that as well. It does take me quite a bit of time to make the videos, so <laughs> um, some of my videos, sometimes they're as short as only 5 or 10 minutes. Many times they're more in the 30 to 45 minute range. When it takes me 30 to 45 minutes to make the video, that means that it takes me another 15 or so minutes to actually upload that video, to get it into YouTube for you, to get it in Google Classroom. So that's an hour's worth of my time. I really do expect you to watch those videos. In addition, you'll use the videos to take notes. Um, chemistry is a subject that builds upon itself, so that means that as we're learning things, things that we learn initially, we will continue to use throughout chemistry. Um, you are responsible for finding out when you miss, when you're absent, including any days you are absent due to COVID. So if for some reason um, you're quarantined or a member of your family is quarantined and so you're out of school, please know right now that I still expect you to do exactly what you're supposed to be doing each day that you're out of school. So um, being kind of homesick, okay, doesn't get you out of having to do your work in chemistry class. Um, again, best spot to know what's happening in class is definitely Google Classroom, okay? Um, and then all work is due according to the due dates in Google Classroom for both face-to-face -face and virtual students, whether you are in school or not. 
So again, it doesn't matter whether you're present or not in the actual classroom, okay? Um, you still have to follow the due dates that are in Google Classroom. If you're a face-to-face -face student and miss a day of school, then you are still expected to complete your work by the established due date. In the event you miss a test or a quiz, it's your responsibility to make it up as soon as possible. Typically, it's not gonna be during class time. Um, both face-to-face -face and virtual students will be expected to take all assessments through Google Classroom using Google Forms. The assessments will be available the day of the assessment and are expected to be taken on that date. Okay. So it is very important. Um, we will see a little bit more about how much time you have to take those and such in just a couple minutes. But know that chemistry builds upon itself. So um, this is not a class where you can kind of go, oh, I don't get that. And oh, it's okay because we won't use it again. We definitely will use it again. And so if it's something you're not understanding, you need to reach out to me and get some help so that you understand what we've been learning in class. All right, communication with the teacher. And again, this is going to be especially important right now while you have a substitute teacher because um, the substitute teacher may or may not be able to answer all of your questions, okay? So communication with the teacher, all communication with the teacher is expected to occur during normal school hours on school days, thus from 7.45 a.m. until 3.15 p.m. Monday through Friday, okay? Email is the preferred method of communication. Students are expected to email using their school email address. If your parents or guardians are gonna contact me, please make sure that they do so from an email account that they check regularly. Yep, my email address is right here for you again. Now, students who've had me before, you'll know that typically I am at school far before 7.45 in the morning. I am a morning person. Um, at home, typically I get up at 4.30 in the morning. So um, do know that if you, what that also means is I go to bed pretty early. So if you email me at 8 o'clock, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, you're not going to get a response from me. However, you may get a response at 4.30 in the morning, the next morning, so or 5 in the morning. So um, I prefer, like, if you reach out to me during school hours, then I'm going to be able to respond to you promptly. So that's really the best time to try to get in contact with me. Keep in mind that I am teaching with students in my classroom. So if we go back to a hybrid model for some reason or virtual students, keep in mind um, that face-to-face -face students are in my class every day. And so, again, it means that I can't necessarily always respond to you immediately, okay, to your emails. I have to do it at um, a time when I have a few minutes to do so. Um, Mrs. Crumshutter may choose to check and respond to email, comments in Google Classroom, et cetera, outside school hours, but that is by her choice. If you contact Mrs. Crumshutter outside school hours, you should expect a response sometime the following school day. So all I want you to kind of understand about that is um, occasionally, I don't do it very often, but occasionally I really do need to take a break from school and have some downtime and not pay attention to my email and such. Um, I won't do that during school hours, but on a weekend, I might do that, okay? Or in an evening, I might do that. Um, I have two children of my own. I have a freshman and a sophomore. Hopefully, they're both playing basketball this winter. And so that's going to mean that most nights of the week, I'm going to be at a basketball game. And so I may not be responding to your emails in the evenings at all, okay? Communication. Um, this is really important for some people. This went really smoothly first trimester and for other people it didn't go so well. OK, so communication is required to be two way. So a back and forth with students. Your parents do not count. Okay? A minimum of twice per week and weeks start on a Wednesday and on the following Wednesday. OK, this communication must be academic in nature and should be initiated by the student. So one clarification about this communication, okay, is that submitting assignments and taking assessments does count, but students should still use email to communicate concerns or questions, okay? So when you turn in your homework assignment on time, I'm going to give you, that's going to count for attendance for you, okay? So that's important for virtual students who are 100% virtual, okay? That can be um, how you get your attendance taken care of and how you get attendance. Um, those will show up as twos in your attendance, okay? That's also going to be important face-to-face -face students during any periods when 
um, our building or our whole district is virtual, I need face-to-face -face students, the same thing counts then, okay? So face-to-face um, -face students fulfill this communication requirement by being physically present in class but do need to follow these guidelines during any periods of 100% virtual learning, whether it's a school or district or due to quarantine related to COVID. So if for some reason you individually are out of school for two weeks during for a, a quarantine for COVID, then it becomes really important that you are turning in your assignments every day and such because then that counts as attendance for you during that time period. So again, just, Moral of the story with this is turn in your assignments, take your tests and quizzes, then you'll be fine, okay? And your communication will be covered. If for some reason you do have a question about something, something that's not clear, um, that sort of thing, then please do reach out to me um, so that that will also count as a communication. Assignments, and assignments are going to be laboratory exercises and homework will only be accepted through Google Classroom, requiring students to have internet access at home and a device capable of supporting Google Classroom. Assignments may be typed using Google Docs or a photo of handwritten assignments may be submitted in Google Classroom. Worksheet assignments may be either typed up with only the answers using Google Docs, printed by the student handwritten to complete and then a photo submitted, or handwritten with only the answers and then a photo submitted. Okay, so a thing about the assignments, um, some students have found that when they take pictures of their homework, it takes a long time to upload them. Um, on, in Google Classroom, under the Google General Class Resources, there's something called an Adobe Scan app. Take a look at that if you haven't been using that. Many of my students who were struggling to upload pictures that it took a really long time to do that found that by scanning those using this free app for your smartphone that it was much faster and went much more smoothly. So if you haven't tried that out, you might want to check it out. If you have a smartphone, the app is free. Um, and like I said, most of my students have found that that is much nicer. That you see here in purple, right? Students will be responsible for using a key or homework check video provided by the teacher to verify the accuracy of homework assignments following submission, okay? So what I'm talking about here is I'm not checking your work for you, okay? It's enough for me to keep track of you turning them in and getting them returned to you. So there's a key in Google Classroom. It's down towards the bottom of Google Classroom. You have to scroll to the bottom of the classwork page, but you will find homework answer keys. At 7 p.m. on the day that homework is assigned, the answer key will pop up, okay? Now, your homework's not due until the following day, so that gives you plenty of time to like check your work before you turn it in, okay? But you need to be checking your work yourself to see whether or not you've done it correctly. Assignment due dates. Students will have until 2.30 p.m. on the day an assignment is due to submit that assignment in Google Classroom. So how things will pretty much always work for me is if I assign homework today, then your homework is due tomorrow by 2.30, okay? Now, occasionally, I give you a couple days for something. If I do that, it's still gonna be by 2.30 p.m. on the day that it's due. Okay, so that's always giving you 24 hours plus, okay, for your assignments. So realistically, what I expect is if I assign homework today, I expect you to go home tonight and complete that assignment, use the key to check it, and turn it in in Google Classroom tonight before you even go to bed. Then no problems with late assignments. Okay, so that's really what I'm expecting. I'm giving you until 2.30, basically when school ends the next day to get it finished. But realistically, you should come to school with your homework already done and already submitted. If the assignment's not submitted by 2.30 on the day it's due, then the student will earn half credit for the assignment. Okay, so you won't get full credit if you turn it in late, you'll get half credit. 
So those are assignments. Now it mentions here labs, just so that you know, and we'll talk about this before we do our first lab, but for labs, you'll have one week to do those. So if we do a lab on a Thursday, the lab reports do the following week on a Thursday. So I'm never gonna give you like a lab report to do with one night, okay? I'm always gonna make sure you have a weekend so that you can plan your time according. Assessments, so these are quizzes, unit tests, the final exam. Okay, will only be accepted through Google Classroom. All assessments are open book, open note for all students. Assessment due dates, students will have until 11.59 p.m. on the day an assessment is due to submit the assessment using Google Classroom. So one of the things about me with assignments and assessments, I schedule everything in Google Classroom. So everything in my class is scheduled to post at 8 a.m. So when I give you a homework assignment, it's gonna become available at 8 a.m. You'll know what the homework is and it's due the following day at 2.30. With a test or quiz, at 8 a.m. the assessment becomes available to you. You have until midnight to take that assessment, okay? Do know that there is no penalty if for some reason you don't take the assessment, okay, by 11.59. But again, if you're on track and doing what you're supposed to, you should take your assessment on the day it's assigned. All right, my expectations, classroom rules, and consequences guidelines. Again, these are things that typically um, aren't really a problem in my chemistry classes, but I just want to kind of go over them with you and make sure you know what they are. Right? Be prepared. Come to class and have all your materials. <laughs> have your Chromebook. It's pretty easy to do right now when everything's in your backpack and you're bringing your backpack to class. Um, realistically, the tattered tools part, we're not doing that right now because you don't wanna use something that somebody else has used, right, with COVID, so that happening. Be on time. My definition of be on time is that you're through the classroom door and you're on your way to your seat. Sometimes um, myself or the substitute teacher may have handouts for you, and most times I put those on the table over by the door for you so that you can just pick them up as you walk in. If you're picking things up over there and you're not in your seat when the bell rings, that's fine. I'm not going to mark you tardy, okay? And the student handbook, like the first tardy is a warning, second tardy is lunch RTC, right? Third tardy, I think you go home. Um, use the restroom before class. So again, please just use the restroom. Now, if for some reason you think you're not going to quite make it back on time, just let me know. Make sure I acknowledge having heard you and I'll tell you to go to the restroom and if you walk in a moment or two late, I won't mark you tardy. No talking while others are talking, right? You've been told this since you were a little kid, right? That includes your classmates asking a question or when I'm speaking. Um, no food or drink in the classroom, laboratories, or computer lab, including water. So in class, in room 415, where we have class every day, water is fine, okay? But on days that we go and do the labs, I can't have you have water in there. Um, most of the chemicals we work with are clear, odorless, colorless liquids. They look like water. I can't have you accidentally drinking one of our chemicals, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind that um, on lab days, you won't be able to have any water um, over in the lab. And follow all the lab safety rules. Guidelines, right? These are the things you've been told since you were a little kid, right? Keep your hands, feet, and objects to yourself. Typically, that's not a problem in my chemistry classes. Use excuse me, thank you, and please. So if you're polite with me, I will be polite back. If you're rude with me, I'm more than capable of being rude back, okay? Move around the room quietly and without disrupting others. Again, if you need to throw something away, if you need a Kleenex, if you need to sharpen a pencil, just take care of it. Right now, the one thing about this is do make sure if you're gonna be moving around the room that you have your mask up and in its proper position, okay? Follow directions. On tests and quizzes especially, make sure to take the time to read the directions. It's okay to make mistakes. So for sure in chemistry, you're going to make mistakes, okay? Um, all I want you to do is pay attention when you make a mistake so that hopefully the next time you don't make the same mistakes. Um, it's okay to ask questions, please. Usually for some reason, people are afraid to ask me questions. Don't be afraid, okay? You should ask questions. If you have a question, likelihood is somebody else in class has the same question and needs that question answered. Do your best work. 
So irrelevant of what you've heard about the class, it's really not that hard of a class, okay? If you do your best work, if you do your homework assignments, if you try on tests and quizzes, which are open book and open note right now, right? Okay, you're gonna pass this class. Um, help others, okay? That's an important one to me. And again, helping others does not mean giving somebody a copy of my homework or making a copy of homework that I typed up and letting somebody else turn it in as theirs, right? Helping others means that if somebody has a question, um, you take the time and try to explain it to them, you show them where it is in their notes, um, you do your best to really help them with it. Enjoy class, follow the handbook uh, policies. All right, so these are my warrior expectations, right? We are ready to be um, respectful. And again, when entering the classroom, I just ask that you greet adults. Okay, so greet me, greet your classmates. Um, correcting assignments, we won't do this a whole lot in class right now because you're going to correct your assignments using the keys in Google Classroom. Um, turning in assignments, again, that's all going to be done on Google Classroom right now, so this won't happen. Neither will the returning assignments. That also will happen using Google Classroom. Um, active participation, absolutely. Like when I'm asking questions in class, do know I'm not a hand raiser kind of teacher. Okay, I hated that growing up and in school, so I don't make people raise their hand. Um, if you have something to say, just don't totally interrupt, but you can interrupt, okay, um, and ask your question. Um, online learning, if we have a class meeting, keep your microphones on mute unless you have something to say, right? That gets really annoying, that kind of feedback. Um, and keep your comments polite and school appropriate. Um, we are ready to be interdependent, which means helping yourself and others to improve the environment. So again, you're going to check the whiteboard to see what is happening in class. It should be the same thing as what you see posted in the stream in Google Classroom, but you should still check it when you come in the room. Um, allow students to borrow things. Again, not happening right now with COVID. Um, again, most of the rest of this is kind of irrelevant. Um, Check Google Classroom daily for your assignments, okay? Um, and submit all your assignments using Google Classroom on or by the due date. So checking Google Classroom daily is really important whether you're here in school or at home, right? So again, sorry about that. Um, again, um, especially because we may have periods where we are all virtual, um, again, I have something for you to do every single day in chemistry class. So I always have it posted before 8 a.m. in the stream. The assignments are going to pop up in your classwork underneath your classwork tab. So make sure you check that. For me, you should be good checking it at 9 in the morning. Okay, it should already be there. Uh, I'm not one of those teachers where I'm going to post something for you to do at 2 o'clock in the afternoon that's due at 2.30. Okay, that won't happen organized have a system okay so have the materials you need for class out of your backpack or bag before class starts so uh, your book again like i said you don't need to really carry that um, but um, when we're taking notes to have your outline out um, to have your periodic table out to have most times you won't need your chromebook but sometimes you'll need a calculator and just kind of in general be ready to start class when the bell rings Okay, and then submit your assignments for the correct assignment in Google Classroom, right? So just pay attention and make sure you're submitting things correctly in Google Classroom. Um, we are ready to be responsible, so accountable for something within one's power. Um, so again, just being on time, headed to your seat, pick up any handouts if there are some, write down the homework assignment somewhere or kind of know at least that you have homework. Okay, and place your bag or your backpack on the back of or under your desk, just somewhere where people aren't going to trip on it if they are walking around the room. Um, again, use the restroom before class starts or ask permission to use it during class. Um, if you do need to use the restroom during class in um, Google Classroom, underneath your classwork tab at the very top is the hall pass. Um, you still need to ask for permission to use the restroom, but when you're given permission, you're going to fill out that hall pass. It's contact tracing, you guys. If somebody who is COVID positive is in the restroom and you spend 15 minutes in the restroom for some reason, okay, we would know that you were in the restroom with that person. So again, you will use that hall pass. Um, ask for permission first and then fill out the hall pass. Um, and make sure your submitted assignments are well-labeled and easily readable. 
Um, that's especially true, like I said, if you're taking pictures and handwriting things, make sure that I can read them. Um, submit your assignments and take your assessments as assigned. Safe, so warriors are safe. Again, you're going to wear your COVID face mask properly, covering your nose and your mouth. Okay. Um, again, I don't have a face mask on right now. I'm making this video, but I'm at home and I'm alone in the room. Okay. That's not the case when you're in school. So you need to have your face mask up. Um, I'm not going to specifically have times when we take a little face mask break. Okay. But if you need to take a break, that's fine. But you should not be speaking during that break. Okay. Maintain your social distancing. So I know we're going to clean desks at the end of class. Okay. I'll just ask, basically, we'll just kind of go around the room with cleaning desks at the end of class. Um, after your desk has been cleaned, I know that sometimes that's a little bit before the bell rings. I can't have you all gather at the door. Then you're not social distancing. So stay at your desk. You don't have to necessarily stay seated at your desk. You can stand up at your desk, but stay at your desk so that you're maintaining to the best of our ability social distancing, okay? Um, and then you'll disinfect your desk before and after use. Again, um, school typically just asks like two, the next two people in class to take care of cleaning the desk for the whole class, okay? Um, only handle your own paper and materials, okay? Um, wear your COVID face mask covering your nose and mouth and it's required if you are speaking. So if you have a question to ask, make sure your face mask is up. Okay, I will be very conscientious about that as well. If I'm speaking to you, I don't take my mask off, okay? So I will treat you as you want to be treated, and I need you to treat me that same way as well, okay? Um, only handle your own Chromebook. Bring your Chromebook and charger to and from class daily just in case it's running low on batteries, and charge your Chromebook before you come to school each day. So. The three binders. So normally I would ask for um, chemistry students to have a binder that's for chemistry class and chemistry class only. However, with not having lockers, um, I know everyone's backpacks or bags are really, really full. So you don't have to do that. I'm not going to have a three ring binder check. I still would encourage you to consider having a binder at home that you're putting some things into when we're done with them. But you don't need to have a binder for class. I won't be doing any kind of binder checks or homework checks. Okay. Grady. Um, again, several different components. We have labs, homework, quizzes, tests, papers, projects, and an exam. Okay. I feel writing is important, so expect to um, complete appropriate assignments and complete sentences and in paragraphs. And late work will be accepted for half credit. So when you don't turn something in by that 2.30 p.m. deadline, okay, on the day it's due, then you're automatically going to get half credit for it. Your grade breakdown, you can't just add up the points you've earned and divide it by the points possible and get your grade in chemistry class. It's a weighted grade average. So labs are worth 28% of your grade. Homework is 20%. Tests and quizzes are 32%. And your exam is 20%. The labs, you'll have two labs this trimester, okay? So that means that when two labs make up 28% of your grade, you can't not do one of them or do them late. And then the grading scale, this should be the same throughout the high school, right? Um, we've seen this before with this grading scale. Um, and then just keep in mind, I don't round grades. So that is your syllabus, okay? Um, again. If you have questions for some reason, you should definitely contact me. Um, and I should be back after Christmas break. So, all right. So have a great day. Please be a very cooperative for the substitute teacher. And I will hear from you soon.